שלום, מה שלומכם? Good to see you again. Let us talk about the elaborate marriage. So we want to understand what is it, but let's go first see the biblical law. We need to go to Deuteronomy, uh, lots of laws in Deuteronomy, right? So Deuteronomy 25.5, let's see what is it all about. Ki yeshvu ahim yahdav umet ahad mehem uven ein lo lo tihye eshet hamet ahutsa leish zar yevama yavo aleha ulekaha lo leisha veibma So the law is like that. If brothers dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. So we know about this law and we know about several, okay, not many cases in the Bible this happened. One is within the law as put here. And the law basically is very clear about the fact that the importance is simply to keep the name in the family. So we can remember the very clear example of Judah. Judah had three sons. And the first one, the older one, married Tamar. And this son died. And then, basically, Judah encouraged the second son to marry Tamar in order for them again to keep the name in the family. The only tra tragic thing is that also this son died. So then Judah at this stage told her, you know, maybe you should wait until you marry the third son. So in English, it is called the levirate marriage. It seems like it is derived out of the word Levi. But in fact, this is a Latin word, which is levir, and the meaning is the husband's brother. Let's see what happens in the Hebrew, because we did not see this word in Hebrew at all. In Hebrew, the root is Yabam, Yod, Bet, Mem. The meanings are brother's widow and also the custom of marrying a widowed sister-in-law, like in the case of Tamar. Also, there you see the picture is telling us about another similar story. It wasn't the brother exactly, but the story is, of course, about Ruth how she married Boaz, which, which was a relative. So again, the idea is to keep the name within the family or the clan. Now, what happens if he does not want to marry her? Can he take himself out of this contract of this law? Indeed, he can. Let's see it's in the Bible. So here, you see, <laughs> he does not want to marry. That's in Deuteronomy 25.7.9. I have picked several portions here. Then... Let's read it together. Very easy, short. So, ve'im lo yahpots ha'ish lakahat et yevimeto ve'haletza na'alo me'al ha'raglo ve'yarka befanav ve'aneta ve'amera kacha ye'ase la'ish asher Lo yivne et bet ahiv. So in case he does not want to marry, he needs to... And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, not to get married, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate onto the elders, pull his sandal off his foot and spit in his face, And shall answer and say, So shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's husband. It's quite humiliating, but I think that was the purpose. Now I have a question for you. What do you think? Do we still practice today this law in Israel? And do you know the terminology in Hebrew to this 
ceremony, the one of taking the sandal out? I'd love to hear your answers and also your comments. If you like it, you know, just raise your thumb up. If you don't like it, then tell me. אז, אז אולווייז, אני מחכה לכם, I'm waiting for you, להתראות.